Welcome to November 6, 2023, uh, Board of Public Utility Work Session. A roll call, please. Roll call. Myland. Online. Mulvaney Henry. Here. Bryant. Here. Gonzalez. Here. Brenneman. Here. Haley. Present. You have a quorum. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve tonight's agenda? So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. Roll call, please. Roll call. Mulvaney Henry. Aye. Bryant. Aye. Gonzalez. Aye. Brenneman. Aye. Haley. Aye. That motion carries. Thank you. Um, are there any updates from any board members from any meetings with UG or? I attended the meetings? public works and safety meeting last Monday. There was one item on the agenda that had to do with community corrections and nothing to do with the board of public utilities. David, did you? I, no. I had been an extra. I'm going to defer to uh, Bill Johnson. He too was at the meeting. Uh, there's one with the mayor, uh, Congresswoman Davids, and others. And at some point in time, he uh, may have some comment as to what overarching it might have. Also, um, there was some discussion since we last met regarding uh, task force moving forward regarding the status of the government, uh, our consolidated government, and how and what, if any, uh, role the utility will play and the um, deconstruction and then reconstruction of a unified government. Has that task force been named? Um, though I don't know if the task force has, they have set dates, for public input, the dates have been posted. Um, I saw five such dates, beginning one Bonner, then Edwardsville, then at two of our libraries or three of our libraries for public input, most of which will convene during this November and this month and next month. Right during holidays. Perfect time convenient. to ensure wider participation. I did note one on December 7th at the Argentine Library. That's, I can't recall the time. November. But, but those are public meetings to get public, public input, but get input. to whom are they giving input? I guess uh, the, the Edwardsville task. mayor, the but that's why I'm, who is the task force? That's what I'm trying to find out. Go ahead. So I don't know who the task force is, but it cannot be, if it is unified government employees and elected officials cannot promote the change of government, structure of government. Um, I mean, it's very clear in the ethics code that we are not to be involved in that. So it will not be the unified government cannot take that on change of government so is, is the mayor a unified government employee he like in elected officials all righty i understand so, so they you know the, the press conference i heard was that they were just taking feedback which i think is acceptable you know you can take feedback but you cannot put forth you know petition to change um if you are mm -hmm. one of those two categories but they can go and solicit the feedback from the community, take the notes of it, and then bring it back to whoever is going to use that information, correct? Well, you know, it's- We're asking, that's, I think, the question. Right. That was a task force. Yes. But, it, task force is but, but it, will not be, it will not be a unified, it probably will not be a unified government if they're wanting to do more than take in I feedback. Like, like, so, task force so I do not know. I do not know the answer to that question. And, and if I can, my understanding was the meeting was called, the press conference was called by the mayors uh, of Bonner and Edwards. I don't know what their status is as members of the quote unquote unified government. But they're elected officials, but I also they are elected, 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 elected government. Unified government elected. So, awesome. but if you have a task force, you'd think that. The, I would there would be somebody's going to appoint that task force and that there'd be people that are on the task force like they had the, the consolidation study committee which was Gary Grable, Eileen Edson and uh, forever Bacchus and several others that were on it do we not have is this who, who's I understand that the three mayor is going to get together to determine how they're going to move forward with the task force but but uh but they're not there yet so 
And that was Robert Bainham, by the way, not Bacchus. Okay, okay. Back Bacchus. in the day, that, that's all right. Um, they are, Start with a B. They're all, yeah, no, Baptist ministers. They all kind of gel together. Uh, but my question would be if BPU or how BPU would come to play. We're not exactly unified government, uh, part of unified government or city uh, employees per se. So I'd be interested in finding delineation for to what extent we can or should be involved because we're not a part of the consolidated, we're not a part of the UG. My understanding is. Right, the um, BPU has a separate ethics code. I've not reviewed it to see if it addresses that issue, but it is a separate ethics code. Yeah, yeah they, I mean, what I would see that it would at least potentially impact the utility would be if Edwardsville and Bonner no longer become part of the unified government with PPU employees be able to live in those two cities and still claim residency. So, you know, just things like, I mean, there's a lot of, and that's just one thing out of how many hundred things are going to be impacted by this. So, anyway. Well, and then the other thing is, you know, BPU would probably be an administrative agency under the city, not on the unified level, like it was before. So, you know, We don't provide utilities to either of those direct, right? Uh, well, we do water to Edward. water to Edward. water to Edwardsville. Okay. Uh, we provided wholesale water at one time too. Yeah, but I mean, we don't. Yeah, we other than that, it's everything is through everything is energy. So, so that at least is a little cleaner. Right. The BPU's concerns. Right. right. So I have. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? You opened a can of worms. Hmm? You opened a can of worms. Well, uh, actually, I don't think he was the one who opened it. <laughs> can I just back up for a second? On our ethics, so I can go to those instructional meetings, those informational meetings, or whatever. But what did you say about the ethics? I can't offer what? Unified government staff and elected officials cannot work on or promote the change of uh, structure of government. So I would not classify you as either. Um, you know, I haven't looked, but I have not looked at the BPU ethics code. That's but I certainly can. And we can ask Ruth Benin for her um, comments on that. Because we've asked her for the unified government for sort of yeah, a set of I'm rules. Just right now, planning on going and planning on being pretty vocal. Yeah. Depending on what I hear. So I don't want to be crossing any lines. Right. I, you know, I can't say with 100% certainty because, again, I did not review the BPU code, ethics code. Uh, so did she issue an opinion on the UG? It, not a formal written one yet, but she has issued a guidance. A guidance. That, that it is, you know, the political that that is political activity, um, and that we are to stay back from it. Can we can we ask her to issue guidance also to absolutely? I will ask her to. I will ask her to include yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, because I'm also a citizen of this city, mm -hmm. so basically, you're taking away my citizenship in that in that one role. Probably. Um, brings us to the board procedures policy. Oh, I'm sorry, Bill. Did you have anything other? Uh, I'm going to hold my comments to the regular session, so we can go into the next section if you want to. Okay. Uh, the board procedures policy. I think we were looking to discuss a couple of the items. You have that one. Um, you want, if you want to go to mark it. Um, marked up, please. I think we were going to some specific, a couple of specific sections. Memory shows correct. And I, you guys have all had an opportunity to review the red lines that are being proposed um, to the policies by the policy committee. And so I, I think if, if it's section seven, maybe, where we were, I don't know if anybody had any questions or comments on any of the other. Up to sections. Maybe up further. Good. 
six two. I think it was. Is that where it is? Yeah, I think it was six two, the second group. I have a note that says move to work session. Okay. The last half of the six two. Yeah. And that coincides right with that was a discussion about opening up uh public comment right during during regular session meetings after the original public comment right uh and it was going to be the public allowed time to comment on uh presentations by staff so if for example there was a presentation by uh Jeremy on the electric distribution and somebody has quit, you know, then we would, after the presentation was over and after the board has had their time for questions, uh, then the public, we would open up and they'd be allowed to time to come up and, and not question, but com make comment. Wasn't that right? No questions, yeah. it was comment. That's right. Up to, you know, and we were talking about like, like maybe offer them three minutes each if they wanted to come up and make comments after each presentation. So, so each agenda item would have the potential, at least beyond like voting on minutes and stuff. But, but the question came down to the, the committee. Uh, the discussion was, do we, do we give them one? at the end of all presentations, one time to go up and make their comments, or do we do it, do we open it up after every individual presentation? Who else does that? CUG does. All right. The standing after the standing, standing committee, standing yeah. committees, if there was something that- uh, But not at their general meeting, they don't let I, I, people no. question anything. Well, it's not questioning, it's you only get to comment. Only comments. Only, only comment, well, the, at, the full commission meeting, only if it's required by state law, um, you know, planning and zoning issues for one, um, bond issues. If So if it's a public hearing, mm -hmm. then the public is allowed to make comments at that time. Otherwise, they do not comment on the agenda items during the full commission. Like Monday, we had a presentation by the uh, community corrections, the head of community corrections, and the the committee got to ask the director, you know, any questions that they had. And then the chairman would uh, said it uh, after that, is, is there anybody present in the audience who has any comment that they'd like to make? Is there anybody online that has any comments they'd like to make? Never had anybody that's made any comments. You know, but it was after, it, they do that after each agenda item. But we only had one agenda item on Monday, so. Yeah, and you and you know, in in hindsight, on the conversation that we had, I think it would be okay to go ahead and allow it that moment of uh, comment after each presentation, because then it's more timely, and and you don't have to have people wait to the end if there's something on the agenda that they'd like to comment on. No. And the and along with this, the uh, proposal seven not two was um, the initial uh, comments that folks would be able to make, you know, were our traditional public comment section. Um, that would be that paired back to, um, to three minutes mm -hmm. of five. So we're, we're going three minutes there and then three little depth for the substantive agenda items. Yeah, I'm just kind of trying to remember comments that were yelled out when our people were presenting Really, and I'm just I'm just not sure I'm in favor of having people speak out. I mean, that's my personal sure. opinion, but I'm not sure I'm in favor of that. Well, that was my concern. You know, when we when we first discussed it, was what happens if you have a group that's bent on disrupting and only there for the purpose of disrupting? Then you know they would speak after. At the beginning, and then they every single presentation they would just. But I, you know, in in hindsight, I'd say that it's kind of like what we we're talking about with the customer service policy. You know, let's move forward in good faith and assume that we're not going to have people who are doing that. You know, if if they do, it may happen once or twice. But 
in general consensus. Uh, and and there's always that if we see that happening, the board can, you know, somebody could make a motion that we su sustain comments after those for the rest of the evening, correct? And then vote on it? Yes, but you have to be very careful with the freedom of speech issue of... Uh... Well, I don't mean the comments at the beginning of the meeting. I'm talking about the, the comments after presentations. But if it's in right. our policy, it's our policy. Right, you know, you could lim you could do a limitation of like a for and against limit of however many minutes. I will say that unified government meetings are starting to trend towards midnight. Mm -hmm. um, with you know, a lot of it is comments, but you know, you can do a they, for example, on planning and zoning, you when an item comes up, it's everyone that's or it has their two or three minutes to speak, and then everyone that's supposed has their time to speak. So you could limit those two. I mean, you could do a time limitation, but if limiting on content is very, you know, you really can't limit on the content of the speech unless it's not related. Well, but could we, could we abstain from allowing comments, period, after a presentation on a board vote for the night, like shelf that because of time constraints? I, I would put that in there. Then it's, you know, based on time constraints, you know, the board may choose to. Yeah, we could, we could put that caveat in just, but I mean, otherwise, just even without that, even just my personal, yeah, opinion. even without that, I'm okay with having, I mean, I just, I just look at it as, you know, we're, we're, we're one of the few places in town that somebody can come and, and express their opinion. I don't want to take that away from you. There's not very many chances that people have the opportunity to even talk to a person anymore. Especially here. So are we, do you guys have other questions or comments about this? Are we ready to move this to a vote in the regular session tonight? I was on the committee, so I, I know what's in here. So I had no problem with moving it to, to the vote. Well, well, I think that, I mean, if we, in the, if we made a cons in consensus right. on 6-2. Right. We have not, I don't believe we've prepared a clean copy. Yeah. I thought there was going to be more discussion. So I would need to run up and I, I would be okay a with copy and a resolution that with the next meeting and and go into effect at, you know, in December. Uh, you That's know, going to ask Chris if we do we ever do an amendment agenda or voting on tonight or not? No, we can't. It's last. It's gone on this long. We wouldn't. We'd no, and I'd like, and I'd like to hear Bob's opinion on it. I mean, Bob's been a long, has a long tenure on the board. So, uh, but, so you want to move it to the next board meeting? I'd say come with a clean copy next one to get approved. You know, and maybe just send it out in advance and ask everybody to okay. come. You know, with any five minutes, uh, allow five minutes in the work session capped to. Any discussion, but so did did y'all discuss this in the work session last time? Was there any two times ago? Two times ago. Other than that, that we made some changes. Uh, I mean, we made changes, but you right. So, so yeah, I mean, okay, okay. There wasn't a lot of we brought we we, we met on it we discussed it we made changes yeah, to it and then we brought it to the work session but there wasn't enough you know, when we didn't feel like the enough whole time. the whole board was here Bob wasn't here you yeah, weren't right. here so rather than to make a decision we decided to hold it over to this work session to discuss it yeah I'm I'm seeing besides the one that we were talking about. The big discussion about everything else wasn't substantive of change. It was mostly just wording, you know, a little bit of here and there, just and to modernize it. Yeah, but I mean, it wasn't really changing the the 
true content, the meaning of the content. So that's six two was the big big one because that's that's an addition to something that we didn't have before. So. so are we agreed to to move this forward to the eleven fifteen meeting? I'm okay with that. She has a mind. Yep. David, I think you okay with that, Mary? I'm fine. I can vote on it tonight. Well, I still think that. Well, they don't have it on the agenda, so. Okay. Uh, but, I'm good. But I, I would, I would hope that somebody could reach out to Bob and get his, make sure that he understands that he needs to read it and be up to date on it for the next meeting. Rules don't do that. I mean, it's board policy, so that's sure. it's kind of important that the board you know, somebody agrees. Who do, who would do it? You reach back. We'll make sure he has copies. We'll make sure that. Yeah. I'll ask him to go ahead and read it. So. Yeah, and tell him that we'll yeah. have a very very short yeah. discussion at the next work session, and then we're voting on it. So he needs to read it. Okay. Okay. And if they are minor changes, then I could, if that's first, then I could run up. Yeah. And make those changes. Ready to move on. Next topic is the 2024 budget update. Uh, Mike's topic is revenue forecast. So we got Randy Buddy to walk uh, where we are in terms of next year's budget. Tonight is our annual revenue forecast presentation. Presentation tonight is, you know, my goal is to, you know, let you have a better understanding of our usage trends, and a better understanding of the bill and the components on the bill, and that some of the inputs that go into the numbers that generate our revenue, our dollars that you see in the budget. And all of this is done to kind of put the numbers together and identify what we're going to project for next year. For revenue, not forecast. Next page. So there's four basic components. Uh, quick review of the bill and the components on the bill. Uh, there's four basic uh, areas on the electric side and four on the water side. There's a base charge on the electric side and water side. Uh, those include your customer charges, your use, you know, your uh, energy charges, your demand charges if you're a commercial customer. Approximately about 55% of the bill is your base rate. That's on the uh, electric side. There's the ERC component. We talk about that a lot. Andrew did a forecast, uh, a presentation a couple of weeks ago on that. It's fuel and purchase power. goes into that part of the bill. It's all passed through cost. It's all billed based on a KWH kilowatt hour basis. And it's approximately a 30 year bill. There's an environmental surcharge or the ESC, which is uh, that we have on the bill as well as a line. Um, it's, uh, you know, it covers uh, cost of our environmental mandates that we've had on our plant and so forth that we've put on. Uh, it's uh, tied to the repayment structure of the money that we borrowed to, to fund those projects. Um, it's approximately 10% of the bill. And then there's the pilot and sales tax that gets added on after that. On the water side, there's a customer charge. It's all based on the meter size. Uh, there's a commodity charge, which is based on the amount of water that's consumed that go through the meter. There's one rate schedule for all um, customers. That, that means the industrials, commercial, residential, all pay the same rate schedule. Um, there's three blocks on it. Uh, there's also a, a third area in the water, which is fire protection. There's, there's a fire lines that a lot of business, a lot of large CNI locations have. It's an adder to the bill. Uh, it's, they're typically zero consumption uh, meters, but our usage, but there's a, a fixed charge that goes with those. And then likewise on the electric side, there's a pilot and sales tax. Uh, going to the uh, ERC, just covering these, these items real quick. So. For our forecast next year, we're assuming a 4.1 cent kilowatt hour. Uh, we've also have the uh, um, ERC reserve we're going to fund next year with that 4.1 cents. Um, 
All the numbers are generated based on uh, SPP forecasts that Andrew does uh, the, through the planning area. Um, the average for the last eight quarters has been 4.28 cents. Um, as you can see, a little history, I provide a little chart there that you can see uh, where we've had, where we've been. We average around, you know, about three seven, somewhere in there, but, you know, before the, the 28th and our 18th and 19th periods, I mean, it's slowly been elevated. Next slide. Uh, Covering the ESC real quick. Um, Covering the environmental surcharge real quick. This is uh, what I just mentioned earlier. This is to next year, we have approximately $17.2 million of payments to. Uh, I guess payback for the uh, borrowing that we had to fund those projects. Uh, so just just a graphical representation of where we are. Uh, it, it's going to peak approximately in 2029. So those dollars are going to continue to slightly rise for the next, uh, I guess, would be like six years. And then additionally, we recover a 0.3 or 1.3% on top of that 17.2, which comes in at about 22.5, would be what the uh, rates will recover next year. So a, a quick breakdown of the bill, just real quick. Um, I did a uh, 811, this is a residential customer using uh, on average 811 kilowatts per month, and I'll show you how we come up with that 811. But as you can see, about 56% 56, 56 of the bill is, based, and I know these numbers are a little different than what I presented earlier. 56% is based on the base rate. The numbers presented earlier were based on commercial and industrial, the combining of all of that. But as you'll see, as we get a little bit later in the presentation, you'll see how that all kind of breaks out. About 25% is the ERC, about 6% is the ESC, and about 13% of the bills taxes. Just a quick note, uh, the state exempts residential sales tax on uh, the residential bill. So there is sales tax, but it's city and, and state, city and county sales tax that gets applied to the bill. So, um, and as you can see how the breakdowns for each of them. And I'm sorry, this is really more for Robert uh, Kemp. Um, are we able, uh, I know that this is being recorded, and is this, is the PowerPoint available, or what, is that, is that what on the screen right now for whomever? The video that you see is the video that they see when they watch the recording. They're watching this as well, not, not, not us. Okay, thank you. Pardon the interruption. Sure. Next slide. So looking at those taking the, uh, the UG, the pilot, and the uh, sales tax out of the mix. This is a, a breakdown of the dot, you know, how those ERC base rates, ESCs look for each rate class. And what I'm really trying to represent here is on the right side, how the ERC has a bigger impact on those larger customers, the 300s and the 400s is a percent of their bill compared to the, the Rate 100s and the 200s and rate 100s are residential. And, and that's really what I'm trying to trying to represent here is, is you know, ERC and, and those 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 things are have a larger impact to those larger customers as a percent of their bill. So looking at our inputs that we go in that go into our forecasts. Um, we look at the revenue per customer. We look at each month and we, we try to figure out, we, we do a forecast for January, we do a forecast for February, we do a forecast for March and so forth. So when we look at all 12 months, we, we go back and we do averages based on, um, you know, it could be 15 years of data, it could be 10 years of data, depending on how that data looks. Um, some of sometimes there's outliers. There may be a high period in a, a month that's you know extremely high, and so we may throw that one out and, and just kind of average it as as an outlier. But we you know we look at usage per customer. Um, we look at those monthly loads, like I mentioned, um, the number of customers that are in those 
classes each month vary. You know, residential can swing two or three hundred per month. So those that'll impact the, the dollars that are received. The historical KWH or KW. You know, we also got to take into account what rates have been approved, what what may change in the year, like next year. There's going to be a, we're projecting a rate change in, in July. So half the year is going to be on one rate, half the year is going to be on another rate. So we have to kind of play with that in the model. And then whatever our ERC and ESC rates are. Next slide, please. This is just a, a, a look at the overall usage for our major categories, um, what we're projecting. Uh, we range between two, 2 billion KWH uh, to 2.2 2. 2, um, a year. That's kilowatt hours. You know, in 2020 or 2019, we had about 2 million. We're, we're estimating about 2.163. Very similar to our 23. 23 is an estimate too, since we're currently in 23. So here's a look of where we are and where we think we're going to be. So pretty flat. There's not a lot of movement in some of those areas. Next. So the number of customers that we see uh, in each rate class, uh, we've got residential, we've got five major components here. We, we do project about 272 new residential customers next year on average. Um, that's probably, you know, we see some apartment complexes coming in next year. So we've been historically a little lagging on that number in, in our forecast. So um, it could potentially be higher than that. But, you know, we always are trying to be conservative and would rather be lower than higher on our, our number. And our small, medium class CNI customers were projecting about 27 new. And that's um, everything else in those other two categories are pretty stagnant and flat. Next slide. So, looking at just the base rates, because base rates are the, the, the dollars that I guess we all can do something about, the ERC and everything else is kind of a pass through. So when I talked about that 811 KWH, so that's how I generated that number. So on the left there, you got each month, January through December, and that's the average KWH for the last 10 years in those classes. So when you average those up with all 12 of those together, you come up with 811. So for our forecast for residential for the base rate, you know, we have, like I mentioned, we're having a monthly customer charge change. We have 24. 26 in July, so we got to model two different rates for that. Um, we're, we're looking at uh, almost a 10 cent base rate, 0.98 is our estimate on the base rate for next year. And that includes the customer charge, and it's going to include the usage that, that goes through the meter. Um, 272 customers new on average, and total kilowatt usage hour usage is, is 597 million. Um, for a total, you can see how that base rate breaks out between the customer charge and energy charge. It's approximately fifty-seven point seven million dollars that we're estimating for twenty twenty-four. Next slide. This is the same uh, numbers that I just presented that was on the left on the previous slide. It's just showing uh, the flow and the uh, really what I want to show is that how that dip from May to July and August is, you know, that's a pretty steep curve on those. So it, it looks different. It looks, and you'll see a little bit later how that curve compares to a commercial and industrial account. So next slide. So this is just a, a, a plot of 10 years of data for the usage consumptions for, for 12 months, I'm sorry, 12 months of data. Um, so for instance, on month one, January, there's, there's you know, 10 years of data. That's where every 10 years, that's where we plot it out at. So the red line is our estimate for, for next year. 
Um, for instance, month one is you know 54.3 million kWh and, and so forth. Uh, August is 71.7 million. I just showed those outliers. Those are kind of this test for us when we're looking at it. 2018 were, were hot years, and you can see how much hotter they were above the, the, the norm. And likewise, 22 on some of those. So it's just kind of a, a test for us when we're looking at it to make sure that the numbers are following what we think they are. Next slide. This is the, when we add all that red line up on that previous slide, we're going to come up with 596 uh, million on the, uh, the plot. This is in megawatt hours. I dropped some zeros off the table. But, um, and as you can see, you know, one of the things I want to point out here is 2018 was, was a hot year. Uh, but you can also kind of see how you know, it's, it's kind of been flat. Uh, 2022 was kind of hot. But you really didn't see much impact from COVID on here relative to the other, other years. You'll, see, you'll kind of see some other things going on on the other slides when we get to them. But um, for 2023, did you just use an estimation yes, for November and December? Yeah, we, we've got about four months where we're still estimating. Okay. That, so, yes. Next slide. So on commercial, you know, same thing here, same information. Just really one thing I want to point out is it's a flatter curve. You don't see that big that that that, <laughs> that dip from you know May up through August. It's it's a flatter curve and than residential has. And um, the red line is what we're projecting for next year. <laughs> And look at the next slide. You can kind of see that dip now. Look at that 2020 and how it drops. Now, you know, some of this is because of where I started the axis at, but I wanted to show how that drop does exist and how it comes back out in 22. So, well, COVID shut yeah, down, COVID commercial. shutdowns and, and the activity and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 24, you know, we're, we're kind of looking at similar numbers to what we have in 23. For this, this category. Industrial is even flatter yet. You know, we look at the curve, it's, it's even flatter than the, the residential curve. This can be a little, you know, you have one customer that changes their, their operations a bit. This can, it can swing some. So um, we generally try to be a little bit on the lower side on this just because of that. Next slide. Some more, you know, we're we're still below 2015, 14 levels in this industrial class. Um, we did see a little bit of a dip in 2020, 2021. You know, we're kind of coming out of them a little bit, but um, you know, likewise, we're gonna see we're estimating very similar numbers to what we had in 22 and 23 in this category. Schools, it's kind of the opposite of residential a little bit. They kind of peak in the wintertime because of the nature of their business. Schools are closed in the summer generally. So they usually peak in the wintertime. So their summer peaks are pretty much lower than what you normally see. A red, red line is what we're projecting for 24. Go to the next page. Very similar to what we see 23, 84, 84, 86, megawatt hours for schools. So when we take all those, those hours and we next slide and we apply rates to them and we so we look at we're looking at 262.8 million for on the electric side on these these major categories or some other things like uh Private area lights and street lighting and so forth is not included here. And you can see how much the base is. The base is about 58% of that total. So you got your ERC in there and your ESC, your pass through costs broken out from each one of those categories. Next slide. So, like I said, we add the highway lighting back into that, what we just see on the previous slide, and we get to 
263.1 million estimate for 2024, which is approximately $8 million higher than in 2023. Real quick on the water side, um, you know, we're assuming we're looking at approximately based on the cost of service study and the rate here, we're looking at approximately $4.1 million, $4 million for next year new. The number of customers are, are generally stable uh, all throughout water. We, we do see some increase in that residential area that we're going to talk about, but it's not a lot to new game needles. Uh, the wholesale, we, we do see some reductions in that, some a couple customers. Um, I think Bonner's going to go to Rome and not next year, but the year after that. So it's still the same rate designs, and um, we're gonna, you know, have a similar thing going on that we had electric. We've got two different rates for the first part of the year, and then we do the second part of the year. So just looking at the trends real quick. Next slide. This is um, this is all customers. You know, it's it's. I, I showed it this way. I started my access at seven thousand or seven million. If I would have started at zero, this line would look really flat, really, really flat. But I wanted to show that there is some some changes in in and what goes on from year to year. But if you look out at it, you really wouldn't notice it. It's it's so so small. But so what I'm trying to say is that the usage on the water side is very consistent compared to what you see on the electric side. So wholesale has, I did start this axis at zero. You know, it, it has been spending down some, the, the, the units sold. And I just wanted to show you that, and that's going to be reflected in, in the, the, the numbers as well. So when we look at our estimate for um, the water side for each class, uh, we're looking at approximately $4.1 million. Dollars. New, and you can see how they're broken out between each uh, class category. That's all I have. All. Welcome for questions if you have any. Uh, Randy, can you, just for those that are online uh, or in the room, uh, can you detail on the on the base rate so you have your energy, you have your you have your actual usage, you know, the amount of electricity that you use. But then you also have just a base customer charge mm -hmm. that's in there. So what is what are those dollars? About? You know, I and I'll tell you where I'm going with this is that most of the people I've told that basically it covers the idea that you have utility services coming to your residents and the maintenance of it and the upkeep. So, you know, during the rate study, those costs are put in and they allocate portions of the cost of the utility towards certain segments of these buckets. So in that customer charge bucket, there's like the customer service feature, you know, of, of cost. There's the, the billing cost to print a bill, calculate a bill, the IT services that go into making the bill work. You know, you got your metering system all the way from your uh, house to the, to the, all the infrastructure that, that takes place with that and the IT specifics that takes place with that. And then you do have some of that equipment, the, the meter itself and the box and the, and whatever else may be associated with that. So, you know, there's administrative, there's you know, accounting, there's finance, there's, there's, there's other things like that are, that are baked into that. Rate as well, and and where would we find? And is it correct that the like the maintenance of the system, like for the water customer charge, that's for you know basically the dollars that are beyond just capital projects, you know, that are just your regular. Hey, we plan on doing this many maintenance. So, if you want the specifics of all the lines, I can get those out of the study. There's a description on the back of the bill. That also outlines what this cost is going to the customer charge. Okay. All right. 
Well, that'll, that'll work. I, I have it at all. Okay. Thank you. Board questions. Sorry. I just had uh, one thing that I promised to provide to you the staffing, a couple graphs that were not complete. Thank you, ma'am. This is just looking uh, follow up with the staffing, and I just uh, wrote down the 2023 labor uh, and burning. We uh, provided the other day that goes uh, through September. And then the second slide is looking at our 2024 budget the breakdown of that. Thanks so much. Any other board members have any questions for Randy or Lori on this? So we're looking at we're looking at an increase in revenues next year. Small increase. Yeah, you know, some of that revenue that we're seeing on the electric side is going to be from our ERC reserve. So that's that's part of it. So you know, I think the base rate probably a couple million. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the work session. Move to adjourn. A second. It's been moved and seconded. Roll call, please. Roll call. Mavini Henry. Aye. Bryant. Aye. Gonzalez. Aye. Brenneman. Aye. Haley. Aye. That motion carries. This work session is adjourned. Thank you.